Assalamu alaikum. This is a presentation for medical students by Dr. Mutaz Ahmad Umar and today's topic is Carcinoma of Tongue. Uh, the anatomy of oral cavity, the oral cavity it extends from the skin to vermilion junction of the lips to the junction of hard and soft palate above. Posteriorly it is limited to the circumvallate papillae of the tongue. The structures which included in the oral cavity are the lips, buccal mucosa, upper and lower alveolar ridges, retromolar trigone, anterior to third of the tongue, floor of mouth and heart palate. So retromolar trigone, it is only one important structure in the oral cavity, a uh, usually hidden area uh, which lies behind the wisdom tooth. This is the hidden site for the development of the cancer. The mucosa in this area is closely adherent to the ascending ramus of mandible. The carcinoma in this region often invades the mandible. Rephrodotalgia results from the innervation by the mandibular nerve, lesser palatine nerve and the glossopharyngeal nerve. The lymph node nodal drainage is into the level 2 lymph node. So this is the oral cavity, the vermilion skin vermilion junction to the heart and soft palate junction and here is the sulcus terminalis or the circumvallate papillae behind. So this heart palate, buccal mucosa, this area is the retromolar trigone. You have to check this area with two tongue depressors. One tongue depressor you put here and push the tongue medially and with the other tongue depressor you push the buccal mucosa laterally and identify this area in your routine oral cavity examination. The tongue, the tongue it has divided into mainly two parts, the anterior two third and the posterior one third. So this posterior one third forms the base of the tongue and it is part of the oropharynx. This is the uh, present in the oral cavity. So this is the body of the tongue. This is the lateral uh, border. This is the tip. So circus sulcus terminalis divides the tongue into the anterior two-third and posterior one-third. The anterior two-third is part of oral cavity while the posterior one-third is part of oropharynx. Anterior part is derived from the lateral lingual swellings of the first branchial arch and got lingual nerve as sensory su supply. Muscles of the tongue, they are basically divided into the extrinsic and the intrinsic group. The extrinsic group has three pairs of muscles namely the styloglossus, hyoglossus and genoglossus while the intrinsic are three groups of muscles the verticular, longitudinal and the transverse. So motor innervation is by the hypoglossal nerve, sensory innervation of tongue is by the lingual nerve. Taste is supplied by the cotton in my branch of the facial nerve. Tongue malignancy has rapid pain over the ears. The arterial supply is by the lingual artery. The lymphatics from the tongue, the tip, it drains to the level 1A, the submental lymph node, while the lateral aspect drains to the submandibular, level 1B, and the level 2, which are the jugular digastric lymph nodes or, up, or the upper deep cervical lymph node, while the medial aspect, it drains into the level 3 lymph node. Lateral drains only into the, if the tumor is of the, the lateral part of the tongue, it drains only in the ipsilateral lymph nodes, while the medial, the center part, can drain in both ways, on both sides, ipsilateral and contralateral. So this is the lymphatic drainage. This is a picture which shows the lymphatic drainage of different areas of head and neck or upper respiratory tract to different levels. Okay, you will see this when you study more about the levels. This is level one, one a one b sub mental submandibular. This is upper jugular digastric or upper deep cervical level 2, these are the middle cervical level 3, this is the lower cervical level 4, posterior triangle is level 5, then in the center is level 6 while mediastinal lymph nodes is level 7. So for oral cavity and especially tongue, 1, 2 and 3 lymph node levels are important and once these are enlarged, these lymph nodes are enlarged, then it can drain into level 4. So in oral cavity cancers, tongue is the second most common site after the lips, 
the sidewise incidence anterior two third of the tongue is the most commonly involved and in from the anterior two third the lateral border is the most commonly affected area the stray one third is involved in 20 percent while the tip of tongue is in 15 percent ventral surface and the frenulum in 10 percent dorsum 5 percent and facial lingual in 5 percent the age of presentation is usually around 60 years it is more common in men than women but mostly seen between the age of 50 to 70 years it usually involves the anterior two-third and can occur in female and younger people usually arises from the pre-existing pre-malignant lesions we will discuss that later and around 95 percent of these cancers of the tongue are of squamous cell variety etiology smoking is the most common thing than tobacco chewing beetle quit chewing and swar these are also very important etiological factors for the development of cancer of the oral cavity alcohol consumption especially if combined with the smoking can cause six times more uh, the oral cavity cancers then sometimes dietary deficiencies of vitamin a c e iron folate and other elements can lead to carcinoma of the tongue viruses especially the human papilloma virus 2 11, 16 and sometimes herpes simplex virus and epstein bar, bar virus they are also considered to be the etiological factors for the development of carcinoma of the tongue poor oral and dental hygiene jack teeth and ill-fitting dentures as chronic irritation and repeated injury from uh, the jack teeth or ill-fitting dentures can lead to malignant transformation sight and spread the middle of the lateral border or ventral aspect of the tongue is the most common site involved dorsum and tip are rare they may infiltrate into the lingual musculature or to the floor of the mouth or the surrounding structure like the alveolus and the mandible lymph node metastasis as already mentioned is quite common especially for the carcinoma of the tongue the most commonly involved are submandibular upper jugular digastric through the lateral border and tip it drains into the submental and jugular homohyoid bilateral or contralateral nodal involvement is also seen in the carcinoma of tongue and it has significance in the management so the pre-malignant conditions uh, whenever any of these conditions are present there is chance of malignant transformation so they include the leukoplakia erythroplakia chronic hyperplastic candidiasis and femur winston syndrome we have a separate uh, presentation for these pre-malignant conditions so these are the pictures showing the leukoplakia this is uh, a small one this is uh, almost all of the lateral border extended up till the tip so this is erythro leukoplakia erythroplakia erythroplakia is 17 times more chance of converting into the malignancy than leukoplakia and this is chronic hyperplastic candidiasis so pathological varieties it may be of exophytic growth or varicose variety or papillomatous growth or a non-healing ulcer may be present then there it may be an indurated plaque or a mass the tongue may be fissured or there may be a submucosal nodule so these are different uh, presentations with which the patient can present to you this is a varicose type non-healing ulcer exophytic with ulcerative lesion if you closely see we can externally we see the mass is only involving the one third but it may have crossed the midline as it may have infiltrated the lingual musculature so investigation to see the midline is involved or not because it has two factors in the management once the midline this area is involved then there is more chances of contralateral lymphatic lymph node involvement and secondly if the midline is involved then the patient need near total glossectomy and hemiglossectomy will not be suffice in that cases as in these cases so the clinical features 
commonest presentation is a painless lump or a non-healing ulcer on the tongue pain can occur locally at the site of the ulcer or it may be referred down to the ear there will be excessive salivation or patient may have difficulty in swallowing or chewing depending upon the sign size of the lesion and the pain then there may be a lump in the mouth lymph node enlargement is the very important factor especially in the carcinoma of the tongue there may be difficulty to protrude the tongue leading to slurred speech and the tumor thickness tumor thickness is most important useful predictor of nodal metastasis as we have seen in the previous picture uh, which is almost leading to the midline that uh, picture uh, it shows that the tumor is uh, has involved the depth deep inside the thickness is more so in such cases the lymph node metastasis is more than simple small ulcer mode of spread it is usually spread locally by infiltration and invasion that from anterior to third of the tongue it can involve the floor of the mouth or cross the midline mandibular infiltration occur through the dental socket or edentulous alveolar ridges those Uh, uh, especially in old age when the mandible or the lower jaw or upper jaw they become edentulous so chances of invasion into the involvement of mandible in such cases is more than one who has healthy teeth so that's why one etiological factor is the poor oral dental hygiene then the cells what happen after this uh, involvement of this alveolar is the cells they proceed along the along the root of the tooth into the cancellous part of the mandible and then along the mandibular canal it involves hold the mandible along with thickness the posterior one third of the tongue it can spread to the tonsil the pharynx palate or the epiglottis lymphatic spread carcinoma of tongue frequently metastasizes bilaterally bilateral spread is seen in 25% while contralateral spread meaning the lesion is on the right side let's suppose and the lymph node enlargement is on the left side so the contralateral spread there is 3% chances blood spread blood borne spread or blood metastasis it is rare but mostly with the posterior one third is seen then uh, carcinoma of tongue of the tongue is very important as on presentation there is 30% chance that the lymph node involvement is there okay so some sites which have rich lymphatic spread then you have to deal with the neck whether there is any lymph node present at the time of patient's presentation or not you have to investigate as there may be micrometastasis and you have to treat the neck whether lymph node is palpable or not we'll discuss that in the uh, treatment so this is just the tnm classification depending upon the size 2 2 to 2 cm 2 to 4 cm greater than 4 cm so this up till this it will be simple t3 and when it involve the surrounding structure it will be t4 the lymph node metastasis less than 3 cm is n1 3 to 6 cm is n2 and more than 6 cm is n3 then depending upon the contralateral bilateral it is further classified into n2b and n2c and m is the distant metastasis so how will you investigate so we have to do the blood cbc count to look for the hemoglobin uh, biopsy is very important and diagnostic you have to take biopsy but remember that which type of biopsy biopsies can be excisional biopsy or an incisional biopsy so for non healing ulcers we always do incisional biopsy the site which is more likely to be uh, the involved area i mean the site which looks more vulnerable uh, or diseased one you take the part of that and the surrounding healthy structure of the that ulcer so you take the incisional biopsy for histopathological diagnosis so when you are writing you should write biopsy 
incisional biopsy for histopathological diagnosis. FNSE, if any neck node is palpable, then we have to do the FNSE. CT scan. So, for neck, whenever we have to see the neck or soft tissue, CT scan is always done with contrast. Okay? And as I already mentioned that tongue, it has rich lymphatic drainage, so we have to check the neck. So, if we only do the tongue area CT scan, then it will not give us too much uh, knowledge of the neck. So, we have to involve the neck. So, basically, we have to do it from the base of the skull to the up till the clavicle with contrast we, or CT scan with contrast or MRI. So, we will check for two things. One, the depth or involvement of the tongue musculature and lymph node involvement. Then, um, depending upon the condition, extra chest has to be done to show any metastasis of the lungs. So, which ulcer should be biopsied? It is very important to know that any ulcer which present there, most of them usually heals within one to two weeks. So, any ulcer which persists for more than three weeks, so up till this date, if any ulcer it is not healing, it is known as non healing ulcer. So, any ulcer persisting for more than three weeks should be biopsied for histopathological diagnosis to see whether it is a cancer or any other lesion because most of the ulcers as already mentioned heal by this time. So treatment, the principal treatment modality is surgery and radiotherapy which are curative while chemotherapy as a palliation may be given. Smaller regions, lesions either radiotherapy or surgical excision especially T1 or T2 lesions they have almost similar results uh, though we prefer surgery but depending upon the patient's consent if he is willing he is not willing to undergo surgery then we can offer him radiotherapy larger lesions only radiotherapy is of no value or it can only be done for palliation so we have to do a combination of both and if the neck nodes they are involved then we have to perform modified radical neck dissection and if neck it is not involved then we have to do functional neck dissection functional neck dissection means that you will remove those vulnerable lymph node levels where there will be chance of metastasis so what are those levels these are level 1 2 and 3 if a lymph node is enlarged then straight away we have to do modified radical neck dissection in which we have to remove all the lymph node levels 1 to 5. But if lymph nodes they are not palpable then any cancer whose lymph node metastasis is more than 25 percent we do functional neck dissection. So the surgery it can be hemiglossectomy subtotal glossectomy or total glossectomy depending upon the involvement of the tongue musculature or the uh, part of tongue. Then if we do subtotal or total glossectomy then we have to uh, do the reconstruction rather the plastic surgeon will do the reconstruction and the latest technique is radial free forearm flap. Free forearm flap, uh, free flaps they are now more commonly performed although it is a very uh, long surgery but these are the latest techniques which are applied and the whole of the tongue it can be replaced prognosis the five year survival rate for stage one and two is up till 70 to 90 percent while it will be lower for stage three and four thank you